Okay, so in this video clip, I'm going to uh, run through the GESC model. Um, previously, we had estimated a binomial model that uh, worked out the value of options and options, in other words, for compound options, where, for instance, we might have a call on a call or call on a put, put on a call, put on a put. And the binomial tree, the lattice uh, tree that we had set up in VBA based on Espen Hoag, uh, textbook, you might take a look. Uh, it was useful because it allowed us to consider European and American uh, properties or expiry. Um, in this sense, or expiration, in this um, video clip, we're going to focus more on the GESC model and the, if you like, which is the, a closed form solution. Um, for compound options. Again, the source here is a 1979 paper, and I've left a link in the collab uh, to the paper um, if you want to read up. Uh, and basically, the paper is um, presents a theory for pricing options and options or compound options. The method can be generalized to value many corporate liabilities. And in fact, that's where a lot of the value here will ultimately be added because uh, when we're considering issues related to credit risk uh, and corporate bonds, uh, evaluation and determining the risk, a lot depends on the value of the assets of a company relative to the value of the liabilities. And so the equity element is always, um, uh, when we consider the, the, the value of the bond, it, the, the value of the bond is in, intimately linked to how close the asset is to the liabilities and then the volatility of the underlying assets. Um, and according to Merton, uh, equity is an option in its own right. So basically a call on a stock could be considered a call on a call. In other words, a compound option. And Gesk here figured that out um, and uh, came up with a closed form solution based largely on the Black Scholes approach. That's what we're going to look at here a little bit more in depth in terms of implementation in R. And we're going to use the derivative market source code to run that. So just to take a look at the, the source code here, um, we might just open the link. And that brings us into the RDRR uh, portal. Uh, and we can see the source code here for the GESC model, right? Now, initially, we start out with uh, making reference to functions that are set up here to estimate the Black-Scholes model, right? So the SKVRTD is uh, a Black-Scholes call, Black-Scholes put, and then we have D1 and D2, and then the familiar ND1, ND2. So we need to load that into um, our environment. Now to run our code in a Google Colab, which is what we have here, and I will leave a link to this underneath the video, we must execute this uh, magic cell, which allows us to run R in the Google Colab. Normally we run Python script in Google Colab, but with a little bit of massaging here, in other words, just executing this line of code, then we can run R, but you must prefix whatever R code you insert with this double percentage sign. So uh, I'm going to run. I took, I copied the code from here, and I pasted all this code into our Google Colab, and I just execute. Right now, if I don't have that double percentage R sign, and I try to run this code. Uh, Google Colab gets upset. So we must have that double percentage uh, sign and then R before I can run this R code. So that gets loaded in. Uh, we need to install this package for uh, distributions, right? So we'll just do that. Normally that can take a little while. Um, here it executed, I think it's four seconds. So it went in quickly enough, but it's because I think I had uh, executed that uh, before. Uh, we need to um, estimate then set up our functions, options, and call. 
right? And so basically here we're setting out call and call, put and call, call and put and put and put. Okay, so let's execute that. And it's gone uh, straight in, no issues. Uh, and then uh, we also need to have uh, a black Scholes implied volatility estimation technique. So that's, we can, again, going back to the Deriv package by Robert MacDonald, linked to his textbook, Derivative Markets. And this is really a beautiful package, but it's also linked to the textbook, which I'll make a reference to in a moment. Um, when we execute, um, it goes in no uh, problem. So now I, I'm going to set up uh, our set of values, S equal to 100, the exercise and the underlying asset uh, or the underlying option and the exercise and the compound option is 10. The volatility is 20%, risk free rate 5%. For the uh, maturity of the compound option is six months. That's got to be shorter than the uh, maturity of the longer, uh, the maturity of the underlying option, which is one year. And we're setting D equal to zero. So let's run and if I run, that's only providing us, I think, with the last line here. So if I estimate a call and a call, it's 4021, uh, 1011, 332, and 590. Now, I already verified those results in a previous video clip linked to the material I presented on the Tian uh, lattice where I had set out in lattice form in a binomial tree form uh, this compound option framework um, and the results uh, that we have here I previously verified so it looks as if everything is kosher it looks as if it's working well um, and the guest model is quite a good model uh, and it's uh, relied upon uh, quite heavily when uh, estimating some aspects uh, of credit risk. Last thing I might mention then is the derivative markets uh, textbook, uh, derivative markets by Robert MacDonald. Uh, Robert MacDonald. Robert is a professor of finance. He has uh, this book. I think it's in its third edition. And if uh, okay, there it is. Right, Robert L. MacDonald. And this R package, the Deriv Markets package that you can load into our studio. Also, um, that's available here, um, um, the Deriv Markets textbook. So it's a really excellent textbook. It's a nice companion to Hull, and it's a nice companion to Hogue. One of the nice things I like about uh, Robert's book, he also presents a number of these functions in VBA and in R. So it's um, a very interesting way to approach the textbook that as you read up the models, you can implement in the R environment. Now you could also load this code into R Studio and check that it works. Um, I won't do it in this video. I think it, that might be uh, something you could do yourself and it's fairly uh, self-explanatory. Okay, let's leave that there.